Now up to this point, we've been writing all of this code ourselves by hand. And probably the hardest thing we did was at the beginning when we had to type those dots and those dashes properly in this thing, right? When we set up the jQuery mobile and the jQuery uh, connections, we got that ironed out. And then after that, it's relatively easier. This um, was the first stumbling block. But after that, we were starting to unlock a lot of power here. Let's go look at a couple of things online to help us further understand what we've got to work with here. So I'm going to open a, a new browser window. Let's go over to wikipedia.org. You've probably heard of Wikipedia. It's been around more than a decade, probably 15 years by now. Uh, wikipedia.org. And at the bottom, we'll search for the article on jQuery mobile. Let's take a quick look at the jQuery mobile article. Because as, as I've said previously, no one really knows all of this stuff off the top of their heads. Um, people look it up, or people know, maybe don't know it all, but know where to look it up. And that's okay that you don't have everything memorized. It is very impressive, obviously, if you do, but uh, it's a lot uh, to ask for. So this and many other resources we have online to work with. So we just jumped into using jQuery mobile, and it worked. But let's back up a little bit and read about this, uh, read about it from one, point of, from one point of view here. So jQuery mobile is a touch-optimized web framework, more specifically a JavaScript library, currently being developed by the jQuery project team. The development focuses on creating a framework compatible with a wide variety of smartphones and tablets and made necessary by the growing but heterogeneous tablet and smartphone market. There's so many different devices out there. Big ones, small ones, tablets, uh, Windows ones, Mac ones, iPhone, Android, there's so many of them out there. Uh, the jQuery mobile framework is compatible with other mobile app frameworks and platforms such as PhoneGap, Worklight, and more. So we'll see that term again, PhoneGap also known as Cordova. And here's a completely different one, Worklight. So jQuery Mobile is more to create, you know, the design, the structure, and a bit of the presentation and such of a project. And then we will couple that with other projects to then take it to the next level. So we'll talk about PhoneGap later. And um, you can go check out the developer site and all of that. And it's, it's, it's just about going to be six years that this project has been out there. It keeps being developed. And if you do notice here, October 2014 was the last latest version, which in internet time, that's a long time. It's you know a year and a half that it has not been updated to the latest version. It's in beta, and you can go check that out and see how it works and buggy and all of that. It's been a little while since it's been updated info about it, etc. Features, so it's a little techy, but you can read that. It talks about HTML5, etc. Quick example usage. This is going to be related to something we'll do later on. This here is uh, jQuery plus jQuery mobile, and the confusion comes that jQuery is the write less, do more framework. This is JavaScript. Um, in this case, you can kind of understand that perhaps something gets tapped on, and then we get alert. Oh, I remember alert from last time. That makes a pop-up that says element tapped. So that's very similar to what we wrote previously. Document dot get element by ID. The ID was div, let's say, and then uh, we had uh, on click equals function. That's very reminiscent of this. But a lot of what I just said is condensed down to this dollar sign ID, in this case a tag, on tap, on click. So, what about this over here? Something about document ready. There's a list here. We haven't talked about lists really. Bullet points. Once we click on the list, slide it down. 
500 milliseconds. So we can do some animation much faster, again, with plain old CSS, plain old JavaScript. These examples here actually are, I don't believe they're focused enough on jQuery Mobile. These examples, to a large degree, are also just plain old jQuery. So these are shortcuts. These are libraries to help us do things quickly. If you then scroll down, there's a basic example with explanation, and then this should look familiar. We just did this right now. We recreated this example from Wikipedia. And here then, we can go back, you can go back to it and look at it whenever you want. This is basically what we just did in class. You can copy and paste the whole thing. Hey, there's the, there's the code right there that you had a hard time typing. You have that there, easy to copy and paste. Uh, it goes on to tell you about themes, and there's just A and B and such, and then there's a big old messy table here about compatibility. The short answer is nowadays it's compatible with everything. It works well with everything. It works on Android phones. A rating is A, B, C. So it works perfectly on Android phones, iPhone phones, uh, Windows mobile phones, etc. Release histories, so you can read all the way back to Alpha 1 release. More info because there's more than one competing standard, and that's what I said earlier. The standards are great, but everyone can make a standard. Everyone has their own version. So these are other ways to do something similar to what we're doing here. Although I think this is also, I wouldn't exactly equate phone gap with jQuery. It's just a see more links and all of that. So it's some quick information here. Just something interesting to show you also. Um, if you back up to the top, if you go all the way back to the top of the article, if you if you not heard of Wikipedia, it's the global encyclopedia that everyone can contribute to. And you can see that right here. If you go to the top right corner, view history, I'm one of the people that contributes to this article. People that look at this article all over the world are seeing my contribution. Just a few hours ago, I went in there and made some changes because this stuff changes. This stuff updates. I've been teaching this. I think I have some expertise in it. So if you go here and see throughout the years, I've made changes to it as well. Um, the point of this is open source. The point of this is helping and collaborating and sh sharing your expertise and your knowledge. Um, that's what this is. This is a free thing. You don't have to pay a license to use this on your app your free or your paid app. This has been put out there with this particular license that lets people build on top of it, as opposed to a lot of the classic software that's been out there. Someone owns that language, you have to pay a license to use it. Someone owns these this editor, you have to pay to use it. But nowadays there's a lot of this open source stuff, which uh, has pros and cons, of course, but the big pro is that a lot of it is free. And that's what we're, we're going to do in this class. Using all of these free tools, to create apps. Um, this is secondhand knowledge. Let's go directly to the straight to the horse's mouth. Let's go look directly at the creators of jQuery Mobile. There's a link right there on the side, or just remember jQueryMobile.com. Go to jQueryMobile.com. This is the manual. This is everything, every nuance about jQuery Mobile. A lot of information on the front page. Let's jump over to um, demos. Top menu bar here, click demos. So again, uh, I guess reading briefly, a touch-optimized web framework, jQuery Mobile is an HTML5 based user interface system designed to make responsive websites and apps that are accessible on all smartphones, tablets, and desktops. So, click on Demos. There's different versions of jQuery. We want the latest one, 1.4.5. Here's the manual. So, I want to read all about what options do I have about pages? What options do I have? Oh, icons. Remember I said we've got 50 icons built in. Let's go check the, these out. So, go to the Demos, and on the main content area, this page is designed in jQuery as well, jQuery Mobile. If you look at it on a mobile device, it's going to automatically change to a mobile device layout. If you look at it on a desktop, it changes to a desktop layout. We have that ability with jQuery Mobile. We'll see later. But for the moment, click on 
under CSS framework section, icons, explains what it is. There's a bunch of built-in ones. There's an icon set, and they're all right here. There's arrow, R. Data, icon, equals arrow, R. Right there. What if I want that warning sign? Data, dash, icon, equals alert. Um, we have a clock, a little cloud. So we have all of these built-in icons for common tasks and concepts. You know, you're building the next great American social network. You've got to have favorites. You've got to have hearts. There it is. You need to go back to your home screen. There's the home button. Go change the settings. There's a gear. These are the built-in ones. We can, of course, create our own, and it tells you the documentation. Here, there's no built-in skull icon, but I need that for my app, so it tells me how to do it here. View source. Click right there. It'll show you the HTML and the CSS. So I've got right there. Button class, blah, 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 UI-icon-myicon. Dash dash then further with the CSS, I have to define what does that mean? Dot UI dash icon dot my icon, and then I have to put a picture. I have to design a picture. With the rest of the code here, a little sizing, and then now I can use UI dash icon or data dash icon my icon. It's my icon. I can make up my own icons. If one of these 50 ones doesn't work, I can make my own. That assumes you know how to use a graphics editor, Photoshop, Microsoft Paint, Illustrator, whatever, but you need to create an icon, but here's how then to add it to your design. We didn't mention this, but oh, we can put our icon on the left side, on the right side, on the top. We'll view source, and how do you do it? There's another one here. We can make a button that is only an icon. We have an icon right now. We have a button that is right now an icon and text. Um, we can look there and change it so that it's only it's only the icon. So all of this built in editable and so forth. I want to create something like this. All the code to how to do it is right there. I'll back up. This is not exactly laid out as I would like it in a way like a beginning to end lessons. It's more about like here's the possibilities, read them and then integrate them and use them. I wish it would be set up in a way like look at this, then this, then this. I'm sure that's coming in, in version 1.5. Um, hopefully before the two-year anniversary of the last version. But eventually, hopefully this will probably be arranged a little better. But I would look at this at some point. We'll look at it also when we need to look this stuff up and, you know, go through each one and see, well, what's, what can I learn about pages? What's, what does it work with? You know, that's what we've been doing there. Setting the jQuery files, the viewport, body tags. Now here it is using the more generic, and again this needs to be updated, it's using the generic divs. Divs have no inherent meaning. We're going to in this class learn and use the semantic HTML5 that we've been talking about, which is the footer tag instead of the div tag, the section tag instead of the div tag, the header tag instead of the div tag, because div tag, these have a meaning. And that's why I went into Wikipedia and I changed that article to use the latest semantic HTML. I want everyone to use the proper way. This has not been updated yet. So I went into Wikipedia over the years and updated it to teach everyone this should be the way. Semantic HTML. There's a little basic template. We made a better one. And all the code is there. And it does talk about you can have a multi-page setup. You can have home.html and about.html, and you can link them together. If you want to read how to do that, it's slightly different. The problem with doing it this way is that um, 
you're going to lose your transitions. Something as basic as these little animations that you go from screen to screen, you're going to lose that. You say, oh, that's just icing on the cake, doesn't matter. When you have a real kind of app, doesn't it have that built in? Doesn't it have a look and feel and a style? Doesn't, don't things scroll in and move around and fade and all that like a real app? Something as basic as this user experience of these animations make the user feel this is a real app. They don't even have to think about it. This was a website. It's a real app. So if you separate your content into different pages, you lose that and you have to you know, get it back and try extra work. So we've been doing it here that all of our content is in one is in one page. <coughs> so this part here is the much more user-friendly, how do I create a date picker, how do I do buttons, all of that. This is the much more user-friendly section. Let's back up. Let's go all the way back to jQuery.com. And then the hardcore developer's screen is on the API documentation. I often refer to this most of the time, but like some really deep hardcore stuff, I have to go over here. And this is written and designed for the hardcore people. Um, you don't have to be a hardcore developer to get this to work, but let's take a look what we've got here under API documentation. Now we're talking about methods, properties, references, all of that. I go look at methods. Here's a list of all of these possible commands that I can write in, in, in JavaScript. Um, because that data, that data transition can also be defined via JavaScript, a more verbose method, more typing. Sometimes we need to go through this method to create more complex events. For example, I've worked on apps where I need to make a pop-up happen, but not through direct user input, meaning it's relatively easy to have the user click a button and a pop-up happens. What if I want a pop-up to happen after a timer runs down? So I need to program a timer, runs down to zero, and then that needs to make a pop-up happen, not a user tap, a timer running out. So I have to look up in here. How do I make a pop-up happen programmatically? How do I make it happen without direct user input? And all of that is in here somewhere. That's why there's search. Let's see. Just kind of browsing around events. This orientation change event. We can have it recognize when a person has it vertical and when a person changes orientation. Make something happen simply by rotating it. Device portrait landscape orientation event. How does that work? I click here, I need to use jQuery on orientation change function. This is very similar. A variation, a different dialect of when we did document.getElementById.onClick equals function. On a click, do something. Here, basically, on an orientation change, do something if you've got jQuery, which we do. There's a full example right there. You can copy and paste, basically. And that'll work best. So it knows I'm in landscape mode because it's wider. If I stretch out my screen, portrait mode, landscape mode, portrait mode. That could be something that I could add to my projects to, to uh, detect when a person rotates the device. So as we go throughout the course, we will be referencing this site, other sites. I'll be giving you other materials. We'll be going toward creating a project together. If this is your first day here, this is what we are going toward. This will other people have seen this, but if you go to vmcompost.com slash sdce, especially on a mobile device, this is what we're going to end up with eventually. Click at the bottom mobile site. That looks vaguely familiar. That's jQuery mobile. Without the nav bar yet, without the icons, without the content and all of that. This is what we're going toward. So we need to learn how to make these different widgets, these different elements, how to link them together to advanced things. 
uh, browser detection, adding images. That's that CSS rounded corner stuff right there, isn't it? Some animations. I want to change the design. I'm tired of the simple black and black and white and gray. Uh, I want that. I want a gradient. I want colors to fade like that. We'll be able to do that. We'll be able to customize it. This particular screen has no footer. This one does. We need to talk about how do I make that pop-up happen. You see how the screen changes and it's a pop-up. We need to talk about JavaScript. And in this class, I believe we should also be able to get to this about a map. We will have a real map with real turn-by-turn -turn navigation. That will work. It thinks I'm in Texas for some reason. Uh, but when we set it up for real, it will uh, detect your device and give you turn-by-turn -turn directions to wherever you want. With a real map, it's dynamic. I can zoom in and zoom out. I can do street view and jump in the ocean right there. And it's going to be real. And again, if you're going to this site on your device, that's exactly what we're going to end up with. So uh, we're going to do uh, one more thing, then we will do some lab time. But this is what we're working with, jQuery Mobile. Uh, we're going to wrap up our, our last bit of our lecture. Let's see if we can figure out how to do this. I want to do this navigation stuff. So let's say I wasn't around to tell you exactly how to do it. How might you figure out how to do this? We have many answers for that. Anyone have an opinion? One particular way is, why don't you look at my code of the site? That's too easy. So what we'll do is, we'll go back to jQueryMobile.com, 10 points for the first person, in the demo section to find out how do you do navigation bars. 10 imaginary points. Again, if I'm not here to give you the answer, all the answers are right here. So under the demos, we do have a search at the top right that might help. But if you're scrolling around, maybe you see something, well, navigation. Maybe I'll click and read that. Maybe not. Anything elsewhere? Have bar? jQuery Mobile has a very basic navbar widget that is useful for providing up to five buttons with optional icons in a bar. That's what I've got up here. I want to do that. The navbar is coded as an unordered list of links wrapped in a container element that has the data role navbar attribute. When a link in the navbar is clicked, it gets the active or selected state. The UI BTN active class is first removed, blah, blah, blah. There's one button, two buttons, three buttons, view source. Div data roll navbar, ULs, LIs. This is what we're going to work. Let's try that. We won't copy and paste just yet. We'll go back to the notepad. We'll go back to our section. We'll go back to our section of home first. And we will add this to the header. I want these navigation buttons to be at the top of my document. That's the header. That's the definition, the purpose of the header. So we'll say after heading one, it's going to have hello world at the top, buttons right below it to be able to click to go to the next pages. Documentation says you need some sort of container with a data role. The documentation still has the old divs. I'm going to teach you that what you want to use is the nav HTML5 tag. There's a tag for a purpose. Yes? Your computer turned off? Locked.
nav, we've got a uh, an HTML5 element for navigation because people were over and over creating the div tag and setting it to an ID or a class of nav. So the HTML5 group said, we'll just create a tag called nav. It has no inherent meaning until we do data-role equals navbar. So now we're up upgrading this. We're upgrading this to be a navbar. Still not complete because a navbar is made out of links. Let's say, just for practice, we'll have a home link, uh, about link, because we have an about section. And we haven't created the section, but let's say we have a profile section. A home screen, an about screen, a profile screen. I want three buttons. And the documentation says, an unordered list of links. So there is a basic HTML 1.0 tag UL. It's unordered list. Basically bullet points. So we're gonna take plain old bullet points and upgrade them into a cool navbar. UL is unordered lists. So make sure, of course, this UL element is inside the nav element, which is inside the header element of the section home. I then need to put in the three bullet points, which will become links. So within within uh, the unordered list, we need each bullet point. So first of all, let's do it this way. We'll say one of our links is going to be home, then the other one will be about, and then the other one will be profile. If this was not going to be a nav bar, this was simply going to be three bullet points. Home, about, profile. This is not quite the full way. We have to wrap li tag around each one of them, which is list item. We're making a list. We're making a bullet point list, an unordered list. Therefore, we need a list item, each bullet point. So li, that's an l, that's an i. It's not a one and an i, li, list item. There's a first bullet point, second bullet point, third bullet point, vice versa, inside of the unordered list. But because we're creating it this way, list item inside unordered list, inside nav, data roll nav bar, that's going to upgrade it into a nav bar. Almost there. I'm seeing it up at the top here. It should be at the top because of header. Oops, data, data role, yes. Not that role, data role. <coughs> there we go, getting there. Data role. It's starting to put them all in one row. A moment ago, because I typed it wrong, it didn't understand what that role was. So it put them as it was the default, one per line with a little bullet point. Since I spelled it right now, it had understood data roll nav bar. It's putting it in one horizontal row with a pretty much equal amount of space between them. Okay, well, these are supposed to be links. I'm going to need to click on one to go to the next page and such. Links. So those are going to be links. A tags. Let's 
wrap the A tag around each of these. So there's the pair of A tags around each of them. Each of them will be an active clickable link in the nav bar. Save and run that. Oh, it's getting even closer. Now they are equally spaced with a cool little divider in between, the uh, proper, a good amount of readable padding and such. All automatic. This stuff that we're writing here is HTML 1.0 from 26 years ago. What's upgrading this to the new cool level? The old nav bar. And now HTML5. Well, these are supposed to be links, so each of these needs the href attribute. And we've seen one spot down here where we had a button that linked us over to the other page. href equals pound about. We have a screen, we have a section called ID equals about. So we reference it this way, pound about. We have a screen called ID equals home, so it's pound home. We don't have a screen yet, we haven't created the section yet. But eventually, pound profile. There is no section with ID equals profile, but I understand what I'm going to do eventually. So we have home about profile. If we click on about, it will go to the about page. The nav bar will go away because we never programmed a nav bar in the about screen. But it should be an active link I'm on the about screen. Back. There's no profile screen, so it'll either give you a, a, an error message or nothing will happen. There's no about section. I mean, there's no profile section. There's an about section. Home. We're already on home, so if you click on itself, it's you know it's, we're already there. And mine has an icon. Does yours? No, of course not. If you didn't add an icon, data dash icon. A href data dash icon. I added an icon to the link. The home icon that's built in. Um, data dash icon. What would be a good icon for about? Info. There's an info icon. A good icon for a profile. Data dash icon equals user. There's all of these 50 built in icons for these common tasks. And obviously, use whichever icon with whatever element you want. But a lot of these icons have built up a meaning through usage. I would not use the home icon, probably, for my button for the settings. It's going to confuse people. The home icon is to take me home. Why would it take me to settings? That person icon often fits with some sort of profile, maybe with the home screen, maybe edit my personal profile. That I for info, maybe I'm thinking it more of as an inf info information about the app, etc. But there's some icons out there that, you know, they have this sort of meaning, and then you start to subvert the meaning, because you can add an icon to anything. 
but if it's got a built-in meaning, are you messing with people and then they don't understand? Would you see that gear and equate it with the home screen? Probably not. What about this one here? Does that feel like a home button? It works like a home button, but the icon maybe doesn't feel like the home button. That's the bars. Or maybe I think about that as a sub-menu. I click on that and more items appear. There's one called grid. Does that have a meaning of about? Maybe it doesn't work there, but that maybe those icons there work better with something else, like settings. Or um, maybe gallery. What if I've got a gallery? That kind of makes me think of a grid of pictures. And then what about that? I put in, I put in that. Does, it, does that icon make you think of a profile? It makes me think of a map directions or something. What if I have all of these 50 icons and none of them works? I'll design my own and I have to read how to add my own icon and I have my own icon. But out of these 50 ones, most likely you'll find some that make sense. And I don't have them all memorized, but I've got a few of them, enough to impress people. And uh, I can look up the rest back on jQueryMobile.com. And so here, we created a nav bar on the home screen. This whole element here, I can copy and paste it. If it's complete and it works, I can copy that whole thing after I've tested it, of course, and it works. I can copy the whole thing and go down to my about section and paste it here in the header section I'll paste it there so now my home section home screen has it I go to about my about has it there's the button home goes home and now this back button is redundant so I can delete it or set it to false. I still don't have a profile screen so it doesn't go anywhere. Now I've got something that's looking like a real app. In three hours. Three and a half hours. So again, if this was your very first day and you had no experience in HTML, look how far you've come. If you have had experience in other classes, you probably still learn something new today. And we're going to keep learning new things. But we're not going to need to reinvent the wheel every single time. There are frameworks, there are people solving these problems, and a lot of these organizations, you can contribute. You find a bug, you can report it on the jQuery mobile site. You have experience in this stuff, you want to contribute, there's going to be a spot there for you to become a, a member and help shape the next version of the code. And everyone's going to be using your code and internet fame, people love that. That's why I wrote that on Wikipedia, I'm internet famous. And uh, you can too. So I think at this point we'll we'll wind down, and hopefully you got it to work. I'll put my code in that network folder in a moment, of course. But any general questions on anything we talked about today? So we'll get more complex, of course, very soon. So I'm going to put my uh, my code in the network folder. I've been saying that if you were new today, I haven't even mentioned where that is at. Let me remind everyone where the network folder is at. So if you minimize all your windows and go to the desktop, you want to open computer window at the top left. There will be a network location section. A classroom data drive Z. Right, Z book. Open classroom data drive Z and then scroll down alphabetically to find Campos Android 1. Open that. If you were not here last week, 
there's my code and notes. I didn't write any separate notes this week. I wrote them right in my file. There's today's file. There's the syllabus. So anything about the classes in the syllabus, like my email. If you'd like access to these videos that I'm currently recording, send me an email in my lecture right there. You don't need to send me an email every week for the videos. I'm going to send you a playlist. Hold on to that link, and every time there's a new um, video, it's automatically added to the playlist. Just keep going back to the same link you asked for for the first time. Better yet, subscribe to that playlist, and you'll get an email when there's a brand new video. But that's, uh, that's it for, for today. We'll have a little lab time until 9.30. I'll turn the printer back on if you need it. Call me over if you need any help, and we'll do it again on Thursday.